Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a good day. Sorry for that leave of absence. I have been working a lot lately on uh, extracurricular activities. But we're back today. And in this video, we're going to be talking about camera limits and fall zones. So if you like today's video, please like and subscribe. If you do also like the content that I push out. And if you have any questions about uh, what I'm coding here or um, any other things that I've already coded or any other uh, content that you want to see, like any questions that you have about coding or uh, things that you're looking for and that you just don't know uh, what to do or what a thing is, then please leave that comment down below in the description. So let's just get right into the first topic today, which is camera limits. So in your world scene or your player scene, if it's a child of your world scene, we're going to go and we're going to actually get the camera 2D that we already have set up from a previous video and have it a child of the player so that it will follow the player. And you want to make sure that the camera that you're going to be using is, has current turned on. All right, you want to make sure the current is turned on. But how we have this set up, we're actually going to want it to be in level one. So we're going to delete this node and set it up in the player or the level one scene. My bad. The level one scene. So we're going to select player, add child, camera 2D, and collect, select current again. And now you can see that the uh, purple window is back up. <clears throat> so if we just play this, you can see that it is doing the exact same thing it was doing before. You can kind of see. Uh, when the player goes back and forth, that the camera also shifts back and forth, which uh, is a problem to some people out there who have uh, like visual uh, problems. Like uh, uh, I don't know, but to fix the uh, constant motion of the camera, we're just going to click uh, down below current to drag margin H enabled and V enabled. We're going to select both of those. So basically what these do is, I'll just show you, as our character moves back and forth, the camera will not move if the character is in the center, but as soon as he passes a point, it will then move in that said direction. So it'll help out, um, it will, uh, the camera will move a whole bunch, a whole lot, and it will stay pretty constant. And you can have a good time with it. It feels like it's flowy now instead of more uh, static and computerized. So this is way better than the, from what it was. Now, <clears throat> the one thing that is important is if, uh, so I have created some holes here. Let's say I fall. Our character is just going to keep on falling and the camera is just going to keep falling with it. So we're going to be doing two things today to fix that. We're going to create uh, camera limits and full zones. So what we're going to want to do is head over to the editor uh, tab on the camera 2D. You want to go down to editor and select draw limits. Once that is on, uh, the camera uh, will now will have limits. And uh, the default is set up at the max range. We don't want it set up at the max range. So for, uh, you're going to do, be doing a lot of math on this one. And I'll select zero for left. And now you can see that there's this yellow line at the, the zero mark, which that's basically saying, hey, the camera cannot go past this. And I'll show you it here. You can see our camera is moving left and right, up and down. But as soon as we head over, it will not move to the left. But our character can still move to the left. Now we're going to be doing some math to figure out these. So the top, let's just select zero and then we'll go, uh, say 60, oh, right, my bad, negative 64, forgot. It, that sometimes confuses me. So now we got negative 64. So we'll really see it when we head up here that our camera cannot go up any higher. So we go, now let's go with, so it's 64, so let's go 128. Uh, oh, wait, that's the, oh, that's the right one. Um, let's go 2,000, no, 
That's not 2,000. Oh my. There we go, 2,000 is fine. Uh, and then to the bottom, this is the one I want to be 128, which that is uh, too small, so we're gonna go 200 instead. And, all right, that's gonna be fine for now. Now that we have our camera limits, and that's how you uh, basically do the camera limits, you can now see that our camera cannot go past uh, some of these points. And now we fall, and we can't see the character fall any farther. <clears throat> that's basically uh, camera limits. Pretty simple, pretty easy, but we're not done yet. If you want uh, this to be even smoother, then in the same tab, you can then select at the bottom to be in the limits tab. You can be selecting smooth and hit on. If uh, there's also a second way you can do it is you actually go down to the smoothing tab and hit enable. I'm fine with this speed. And all this does is it basically just smooths out all the transitions of the camera. You can see that right there. Uh, and having our character glitch around though, so I don't think I actually like that. But you can tell that the camera is moving a bit smoother than it was. It's not uh, it's not being a little staticky as soon as the character passes through. It's going to then move. It's going to be a lot like smoother, a little, little acceleration, deacceleration action. So I'm actually going to turn that off. I do not like that. So I'm going to turn those off and save. Now we're going to go onto the fall zones, which this one is uh, pretty uh, simple. We're going to select level one and we're going to add child. <clears throat> and we're going to want to do an area 2D node. And we're going to call this fall zone. And you can see that there's that triangle. That's basically just telling us uh, that it needs a collision shape because this uh, will be colliding with uh, other objects. So we go collision shape 2D. And we're going to select as our shape to be a rectangle. And we're going to drag it down to the bottom here. Uh, underneath our platforms and we're going to extend it all the way out and let's push it up a bit just to make sure that the character does get uh, detected in it and that's our uh, that's our area 2d we're also going to be using something called signals so in the inspector tab that's what we've been working on most of the time with each object now we're actually going to move on into the nodes tab the nodes tab basically is just uh, signals, a group of signals that uh, the object can do. And what a signal is, is uh, very, very useful. It's a way of communicating between different objects. So you can, um, as soon as it's active, it can then call uh, a function when it's triggered in the script of the person itself. So I can do uh, body entered onto fall zone. I can connect the fall zone signal back to fall zone or what we're going to do is we're going to select body entered in the fall zone tab and we're going to connect it to the player script and you can only connect them if they have their own scripts so what we're going to do is we're going to select fall zone go into the nodes tab and select body entered we're going to double tap it then the only thing we have as a script right now is player but you want to make sure that in your games there's going to be things with multiple scripts. So you want to make sure that the script you're working with that you want is selected. And then you can change the, um, the name of the function down here. This is what the name of the function will be. It gives you a preview of what it is. So we're going to then hit, since our player is selected, we're then hit connect. And you can see that the, uh, the function name is right there. And it gives us that pass so the uh, the uh, go dot doesn't uh, freak out. And all we're going to do is we're going to type git tree dot change scene, not, not to, but just change scene. And we're going to select uh, the level one scene. And basically what this is doing is as soon as we enter 
uh, as soon as a body enters the uh, fall zone, it will then change the scene. And what this is, is it's saying to get tree. And what uh, that function, well, that call to does is it goes down to the file system of Godot and it, it gets the tree, so it gets the res, and then it gets the change scene. And so we're gonna go and we're gonna change the current scene we have right now, and we're gonna change it to our level one scene, which is the one we have, uh, which is the one we're working on right now. And in it, you wanna make sure that you have the full path to the scene. So it always should end with TSCN, I mean scene. You wanna make sure that this yellow part is the full path to it. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna play it, and we're just gonna hop down, and you see it just spits us right back, and we'll reset the scene. So if we had, uh, say, an enemy over here, we took him out, pop, bam, done, fell, the enemy would still be right there then, because the scene is then reset to what it originally was. So then, uh, in the future, you can then go back to like save point that uh, the game created, or you can go and select coordinates uh, to like a specific spot. So say uh, in like Mario Kart, when you fall off the track, it will then put you actually back uh, onto the track in like the center spot. It won't just teleport you and everybody else back to the beginning. It will just take you and move you back onto the track, which that's something you can do in that script. Uh, but in this one, we're just going to reset the scene for now. And that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for listening to this entire uh, video. Uh, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. I will see you guys all in the, uh, the next video. Thank you.